Hi everyone. Today we are going to be creating a new entity for our project for the web instance. Um, I'm going to click over here to my environment. I am in my project management project. Uh, you can see there are different buckets of information. Um, I have my general section, project status, estimates, and actuals. And then up at the top, I have an issues and a risks list. And these are not um, a native part of the project for the web. So I did uh, create them and relate them to each individual project that I have in my environment here. Um, if I'm gonna go ahead and click, you can see I have two issues for this project. And I did incorporate a couple of new fields uh, for the status, due date, data points that are generally captured with your issues list. And I also did a similar build out for the risks where I captured um, a lot of the points here. And you can see in my issues list here that when you click on it under this one particular project, it does filter to show you only issues that are related to this project, um, which is, is very helpful when you're navigating. We click in here, there's that as well. And also in my summary tab, there is a count. Um, you can see here there is a number of issues and a number of risks associated just with this project. And if you do go ahead and add in a new issue or risk, there is a calculate button over here and you click recalculate. And if your number of issues or risks does change, it will show up there and then it will populate a brand new, a last updated date and time stamp there for you. So you know when the last version of the information is most up to date. So to create your new entity, we're gonna come over to the Power Apps homepage. Um, you can either get there by clicking on your waffle up here and clicking on Power Apps or by going to make.powerapps.com. I have clicked under my data section over here in the left menu and I have clicked on entities. So the very first thing we're gonna do is to create a new entity. Um, an entity is basically a container that where we're gonna build all of the pieces that's gonna make up our new entity. Um, so we're gonna create one for action items. Uh, we know a lot of times when it comes to project management, there are issues and risks that's helpful to track. Make sure you know what is impacting your project or has the potential to. Um, action items is another uh, top requested list uh, that I get when it comes to project management. Where can I maintain the action items? How can I know who's responsible for it when it's been completed? So I'm gonna go ahead and name it uh, action items here. I'm gonna go ahead and leave my enable attachments unchecked for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and click create. Um, so it does take a few minutes here. Once I do click that create, it, it initially would just show, will just show me that name is the only thing here. But what it's doing on the background is, is it's populating all of the different, some of the default fields that come when you create a new entity. Uh, so you can see here now our list, your entity action items has been provisioned successfully. And when it does that, it creates several new fields underneath it that need to be um, just, just standard fields that are there for you. So I'm going to go ahead and come up here and I am going to build in several new fields myself to this entity, things that I'm, I think are important to capture when it comes to building an actions item list. So we already have our title. So the next one I'm going to do is my assigned to. How am I supposed to know who this belongs to? That's usually one of the very first questions when trying to make your team be responsible for what they're, they are uh, is on their to-do list. So I'm going to create an assigned to field and I am going to make it a lookup. And what I want it to be able to look up is the set of users that I have. So I'm gonna go ahead and create that here. And I'm going to make this a required field. Some, if I create an action item, somebody needs to belong to it. And um, so once I create it, you can see it is bolted here. And then down at the bottom, you do get a bar um, that lets you know that this has not officially been saved yet to your entity. And you do have to click that save entity before it becomes a part of our action items entity. So once that saves, we're gonna create a couple of uh, other additional fields. We're gonna create one for description of the action item, a place where notes and other pieces of information can be added about it. So we're gonna add a description field. Um, it will generate an internal name here for you and it is read-only. Um, that is something that system entirely will do. It's available for you for reporting um, in the CDS or the common data service you can use in Power BI or other Power App platforms. I'm going to create this a text area um, because this one is a multi-line text box, whereas just text is a single line. And I'm going to go ahead and click done. Go ahead and save my entity here. I'm going to add one for due date. That way I know when this is going to be due. And my data type here is going to be a due date only. Go ahead and click done. I do need to create a related projects web part. That way I know exactly what project that, that, that my action item does belong to. So I'm going to go ahead and add a field here and I am going to call it related project. And I am going to have this be a lookup 
Um, only this time, instead of it being looking at the user, I'm going to have this look at my project entity, which is where I have stored um, my product's information stored. Over here, I'm going to make this a required field. That way, no action items get lost. And then I'm going to create one more field for completed. That way I can create a view that says I want to see all of my uncompleted action items or completed or all where I have that uh, field that I can filter on um, if I'd like to. So I'm going to create one for completed here. And I'm going to make this just a yes or no look up here. Yes or no. My default value will be. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and click that and we're gonna save it. So once we've done this, now I'm gonna to come to my form section here. I'm gonna to come to down here to my card. And here's where I'm gonna add the different fields that I want to be available for me when I come to this um, page. I must not have clicked on the right one here. Back up. Oh, we want to come to our main here. This is the one that we'd like to edit. And so once we are populated here, a form will generate in the middle. Um, by default, it will only have the name and the owner. Um, on the left-hand side are the field panels. And you see there is a checkbox here for show only unused fields. And so as you drag and drop them over to your form, they will disappear. But if you need to get them back, you can click on that um, show only unused to unselect it. And then over here on the right is where um, some of the display information is about the form that I'm currently on. So we're gonna have our name, our owner, we are going to have our assigned to, let's do our description, due date. Just adds a couple of the fields. We need to make sure we have our related projects on there so it can relate. And then we're gonna have our completed uh, field here. So once you've built your new form, we're gonna go ahead and publish it. That way it makes it available for us to use in our projects entity. So once it's published, we're going to go ahead and click back. And now we're going to go, well, it'll take us back to our, our um, section here. We're going to come to entities and we're going to find our projects one, uh, which is not available in default list. So you may have to come up here and change this to all. I'm going to scroll down until we find projects. Here we go. Uh, so now we're in the, the projects. And so we need to... Um, create a new field here for our number of action items. We have one, and this will be a roll up. It'll roll up the, num the complete number of action items associated with this project and generate it with me similar to what we had for number of issues and number of risks, or it gives me a count in that last updated field. It'll do that same here. And um, so we're gonna go ahead and come here and I am going to add a new field. Here, I'm gonna put number of action items. And my data type here is going to be a number. And then my calculator roll up, I am creating this to be a rolled up value. Um, so first I have to save the one I have and then this will generate for me in a separate pop-up box that allows me to do it. So you can see down here, it asks if I'm gonna allow it to populate for me. And so it will populate in a different window. So here's my number of action items. Um, I'm going to update this. My related entity is going to be that action items that we just uh, created. I'm gonna select it. You may have to expand your box here um, because if you do go too small, you won't see that check box off on the right hand side. So I'm gonna go ahead and click check. And then my aggregation is going to be a count of the action items there. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and do a check box. So once I have done that, I'm gonna go ahead and click save and close so that it'll populate it and put it back into my project entity. So I'm done, I'm gonna scroll down and I'm going to make sure that it does uh, put it in there for me. Number of action items, excellent. And it also did generate that last updated on, which is the date field that's associated with it. So I'm gonna to come to my views here. I think we're all, we're all set for everything that there is. Click on my forms. I do wanna make sure that I add in um, a new section here so that it will be available for me. So I do have that link to the action items. Um, Cause you can see up here at the top, we only have summary tasks, issues and risks here. So I do want to add in a, um, a new tab up here for action items. 
So I'm going to click on add component here and it will bring out these different ways for me to lay out my information, input information. I am going to choose a one column tab here. And once I select it, it will just add a brand new tab over here at the very end um, of my section here. So I'm going to go ahead and expand it. I want to call it action items. And we're just going to go ahead and, and, and leave it pretty, pretty basic for now. Let's go ahead and click on our section here where our new section is going to be called action items as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and publish it. So once it's finished publishing, we are going to um, go back to a project and we're going to insert in um, an action item and confirm that everything is working the way that we expect it to here. So I am going to come up here. I'm going to come back to my Power Apps homepage. That way I can go to my project entity with the data from my projects. Click on project here. I'm going to go back to that same project management project that we used um, to demonstrate the issues and risks. So I do have a new tab here for action items. And once I click, I don't have any action items in here. Oh, I did not put my grid in here. So we're going to go back to our Power Apps over here. And we're going to go back to that project entity and to that tab. And now we need to add a grid so that we can actually enter and view our action items there. Oops. Went back I went a little bit too far. Let's come here. Data, entities. Again, up here, your projects will not show in your default list. You need to go to all. And then we're going to find our project entity. We're going to come up here for our, our form is what we want, our information form. I'm going to click on our action items. And again, so we did cre uh, create the page, but we did not add any grid. So we're going to come to our component here. And here is where we are going to create our subgrid. We want to make sure that we do find this from our action items all action items. Yeah, we want to do our active here. We'll go ahead and put that in there. There we go. And then we're going to go ahead and publish that. Now we'll have some actual data and be able to add in new action items straight there in our form. So once that's published, now we're going to come back to our, uh, our projects page here, come to our summary and to our action items. <laughs> Let's go ahead and refresh this since we, our, our, our change took place. And now we have our grid populated here for us. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new action item. Um, it did bring up that, that form that we just put in here. So I'm going to say, here is my new action item. I'm going to say I'm the owner of it. Um, I'm also the assigned to person. So I just start typing and it will populate there. And here is my new action item, um, action item from today's meetings. Notes to be posted. Say the due date from our meeting today. Say you have till tomorrow to post those notes. Um, and then here we're going to connect it to our project management project. And we're going to say that it is not yet completed. So I'm going to go ahead and click, click save and close. And so it will populate here. Um, I'm going to come to my summary over here. And we did not put our number, our count here. So we're going to go ahead and add that now. Now that we have an action item in there for us, we want to make sure that it is going to be um, related. So I'm going to switch back my views to my entities here. And I'm going to come to, again, just go to all so I can find my project entity. Let's scroll down a little bit. And I'm going to come to my form. And we did create our number of action items uh, fields. Uh, we just did not add it to our list over here. So that's the only thing that we really need to do to be able to connect these two together. So I'm going to, I do have my show only unused checkbox here. So I'm going to do uh, view my number of action items. I'm going to put it under here, under my issues and risks. So I'm going to put it there. You can see it does put in the number of action items and also the last updated field there by default. I'm going to go ahead and click publish. Once that happens, I'm going to go ahead and click back. I'm going to come to my home page up here. Let's go back all the way through through from the from the beginning. We're gonna, we'll go back to our project management project since we know that there is a count there. Um, so it does only refresh every 12 hours or so automatically. So if I want it to uh, calculate for me, I'm going to click on this calculator over here on the left and then I'm going to click recalculate. 
And you can see that it does show now that there is one action item and it does give a date and time stamp of where that is. So I'm gonna come over here. If I wanna add an, um, some additionals over here, I can do that. I'm gonna go ahead and click back. And so that is how you can create a new entity for capturing different parts of information about your projects. And we will be doing several more videos as we continue to build out project for the web. So stay tuned.